What's up, peeps? Welcome back to The Horrible Show. My name is Trav. We are here at Casa de Lazy Eye and Deaf Dog. I wanted to kind of share with you an appreciation. An appreciation video. I'm watching Pet Cemetery right now. I'm about... I didn't mean to start playing it again. Judd's about to sadly get what's coming to him. We were like, oh, oh, Judd didn't deserve that. If he wouldn't have shown him the freaking Pet Cemetery, Gage wouldn't have died. But I digress. I know for one, being a kid that was always into horror and not being a huge reader when I was a youngster, uh, you kind of go through different uh, stages of buying books, right? So let me give you an example. Let's say if you were really into movies, you'd pick up something like this. You'd pick up books on directors, right? Books on movies, right? You'd pick up novelizations of your favorite books. I don't know. I know people really like that. I know people really like to read them, but sometimes I don't think they translate as well. It's probably an unpopular opinion. I'm sorry if I got any people that uh, want to fight me after that. But what can I say? I have the book. Then you kind of get into your, you know, uh, get beyond that, right? You get into your Edgar Allan Poe. What's another good one that I picked up over here? Oh, yeah. You start to get into your short fiction, your Richard Matheson, your I Am Legends, your What Dreams May Come, which is an amazing book. And then you kind of get into your classics. You get your Exorcist, which was a book before the movie. And then one day, when you're at the thrift store, or you're at Barnes & Noble, or your book's a million, you stumble upon the master, Stephen King. It's my favorite Stephen King book right here, The Dead Zone. Both the book and the movie are equally different, but equally as amazing. If you have seen the, I'm not all right. I'm not trying to just sit here and preach because you know people that would just be like, "Man, the book was better. The book was better. The book was better." Dude, we know. Especially if you're not a big reader, we know the book was better. Like 99 times, the book is better. I will say there's one book on this list that is not better. Dude, we know. Stop telling us. These are a couple of my picks of my favorite Stephen King movies and my favorite Stephen King books. The Dead Zone. I probably read this book at least five or six times. It's my favorite Stephen King book. Uh, I think it's my favorite Stephen King story. Um, it had a television series that I did not watch at all. It also had a movie that I quite, 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 quite enjoy because it is a really good movie. David Cronenberg. This is just spark notes. This is a condensed version of the story. Uh, this one gives the story a little bit of little bit more breathing room. His relationship with his mom, you know, it's pretty intense. It makes me think about a lot of the relationships I have in my life. Think about that. Let's go through the the books and then we'll go through the movies. Misery. This is probably my second favorite Stephen King book. Uh, after a while, I said it was an allegory for cocaine and drugs. As you can take uh, the novel pills in the novel, um, and then it, in the movie it kind of brushes up on the novel pills a little bit too. Not as heavily influenced as it is in the novel, but um, I was blown away the first time. I know I say that a lot. Uh, I was blown away the first time that I read this book. Uh, absolutely blown away by the movie. I need to buy, I don't have it on Blu-ray. I don't even have uh, Misery on DVD. I have it on VHS. I was gonna bring that up here, but you know, Whoever still collects VHS, holla. Still got you on Misery. And that's the last time I watched it. I watched it on VHS like two months ago. It was amazing. That's what I like. Different enough to where even if you double dip, let's say if you have, if you read the book and then let's say after you read the book, you wait about a month and we'll watch a movie. It's not like the exact same thing. It's not like regurgitating the same stuff. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I like books about. Books about? That's what I like about books. Man, probably dyslexic. I don't have the cover to this, but this book is a monster. It's a mammoth. Stephen King, did you hear that freaking book fall? No matter how many times they tried to remake or try to put it into a movie or physical form, I want you guys, like, if you have the time, don't read the whole book. Just read when they battle it when they were kids and then read when they battle it again when they're adults. Less than 100 pages altogether. If you guys have time for that, because nothing, the way that he wrote it is so out of bounds and cosmic and bizarre 
that it's really, really interesting. Like if you get a chance, maybe if you can collect those hundred pages and like I said, the battle when they're kids against it and then the battle when they're adults, it's the, it, for me, it's the best part. Like, especially the battle when they're kids. I was, I was, I didn't think, you know, I haven't read any HP Lovecraft in my life, but I feel like I was going into, it was very, very like next level. I wasn't ready for it. I fully recommend that, but I recommend the TV miniseries. And I also recommend Andy Machetes. Andy Machetes? Yeah. It's It Chapter 1. I think this is so much better than It Chapter 2, but what can you do? You have to remember, I was a little bit hesitant. I know you guys don't know this, but uh, I remember I was a little bit hesitant because uh, Carrie Fukunawa? 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 Fukunawa. I was a little bit hesitant because Carrie Fukunawa? 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 Nagua. The dude that had uh, dips his toes all into uh, True Detective. What he did is that he wrote the original screenplay for the first movie, It, right? For for this version, before uh, Andy Machete came on. But he had a, a little bit of minor differences in it. Like, he had changed all the cast names for some reason. So it wasn't Georgie, and it wasn't Bill, and it was a whole bunch of... He just changed the names for some reason. But then he eventually stepped out, or he had disagreements with the studio, and then... Uh, Andy Machete came in so that's why you know now seeing it chapter two and kind of like the holes and the plot and story like that uh, maybe maybe Carrie's call him Carrie F uh, his influence on this movie might might have been more than what people thought The Shining my thoughts on The Shining book right my thoughts on the novel The Shining is that that thing is not as good as the movie I think uh, there's stuff with the hedge animals. There's not a hedge maze. There's like uh, hedge animals that come to life, and it's and it's pretty silly. And some some moments are draggy. My one of my favorite thing is the when you start reading Stephen King books is if, that uh, all most of his books intertwine, right? So you'll 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 get to know these characters and you get to love these characters. Dick Halloran, right? Everybody remembers Dick Halloran uh, in the in the movie, he gets killed with the axe. In the book, he survives. But he is actually in the book. It there's, a, there's an old uh, nightclub at that Pennywise burned. I think it was in the it was either in the 30s or the 50s. Or, yeah, and Dick Halloran actually saves uh, Mike Hanlon's dad from uh, from the fire or something like that. So it's pretty entertaining. Pretty entertaining. Pretty cool. Recommend the movie over the book, but. Both the book and the director's cut movie. Amazing. I freaking loved Dr. Sleep, the movie. This novel is really, this novel is about addiction, straight up. Uh, it's, it's very, very similar to Misery, but it's very post uh, the after effects of being an addict or alcoholic. I, I respect that a lot. The older I get, the more... Uh, I've had friends, I've had co-workers, you know. I know I'm preaching to the choir here. But over time, like the 18 to 25 age, once you get past that, um, you'll start to see it's like maybe maybe you might develop a, an alcohol or substance uh, abuse abusive relationship. but uh, Or you might see some friends like that or family members. And uh, it gets, life gets pretty real real quick, you know. But... Um, so it it feels very very honest, and very very true to life, and uh, and all you can do is just respect respect the hell out of the book because it seems seems so true you know, especially when I was reading in interviews that Stephen King can't even remember writing Cujo because he was so drunk and coked up the whole time like dude doesn't remember writing a whole book like a whole book, that the Tommy the Tommy knockers he says he barely remembers writing like. And Cujo got a movie and made money, you know what I'm saying? So he probably got paid a pretty penny. Uh, when he was shooting Maximum Overdrive, he said he was so coked out, <laughs> you know? I know he, Stephen King had a falling out with George Romero for a lot of years because he was coked out and paranoid. But um, stuff happens, you know? He's been clean for a long time now, but... Uh... Yeah, and it's pretty interesting. I forgot to bring this book, but he's got a, uh, he's got a book on writing. 
where he says he used to drink he used to drink the mouthwash. He says he prefers scope over Listerine because it tasted better because there's alcohol in mouthwash. When you're an alcoholic, you'll drink whatever you can get your hands on. Pretty intense. He was a pretty intense dude. And I'm like I said, I'm watching Pet Cemetery right now. And I would say like uh, Pet Cemetery and the movie are pretty, pretty similar. Nothing too far deviated from that, which they're both fantastic. So with the book, you just get a little bit. It's everything. Ugh. With the book, it's everything's just a little bit more fleshed out. And do you necessarily need that? Not for real. If you're watching, you know, not not the remake. And I know you guys have seen this release in other other videos of mine, but uh, Carrie, such a fantastic book. I don't have the book with me right now, but fantastic film by Brian De Palma, been remade twice. That was Stephen King's first published book, right? So he had the manuscript and he threw it in the trash. Or, or I, th I think the first like uh, 15 pages or something threw it in the trash. And then his, uh, his wife pulled it out and he, she was like, hey, this is good, finish this. And I know it's super interesting because uh, if you read in his book uh, on writing, when they called him to tell him that he got the first paperback uh, check and it was uh, 400 grand plus, or uh, and he gets 200 grand. Like, I think the, the company was Doubleday. He was with Doubleday Publishing at the time, and uh, he got $200,000, and I think he was living in a trailer or living in a single-bedroom apartment. So, yeah, he's, and Stephen King is definitely a rags to riches story, you know. I'm a John Carpenter and Stephen King fan. Um, John Carpenter was supposed to direct Firestarter, but with the box office failure that the thing was, um, they kind of gave it to somebody else. And then when the, when the rights for Christine came up, uh, they asked John Carpenter to make that for him. I believe that was MGM. Yeah, I think it was MGM. And uh, Creepshow. Of course, George Romero. Like I said, they had a little falling out, but I don't think it, very, it lasted very long. I believe one of the, um, for Creepshow 2, I believe one of them was uh, Stephen King and George Romero wrote one of, uh, I believe it's the uh, the last um, last little vignette on the Hitchhiker. Was it the Hitchhiker? Is that what it's called? The Hitchhiker, I think that was in the works for the first Creepshow, but they ran, either ran out of time or didn't have enough money, so they put it on the second Creepshow. Yeah, my love, my love for Stephen King runs deep. I love the new novels that he's doing, Mr. Mercedes, the, uh, the Bill Hodges uh, trilogy, I think is fantastic. Um, the Dark Tower series uh, is very good. Some people don't, don't necessarily like Stephen King's endings, but um, can't blame the guy, you know. It's hard to write an ending. Oh, there are so many movies that... Uh, I'm not talking about, I have Shawshank Redemption, I have Stand By Me, I have uh, The Green Mile, I have all these movies, uh, but I think Stephen King is going to go down when the day comes where he does pass, you know, I don't think that's going to be anytime soon, but I think he's going to go down as probably the most prolific and most successful and most famous writer, maybe in the past hundred years. I know that's saying a lot, but he's he's the real deal he's the shit so i just wanted to kind of give you my two cents my thoughts Ugh. i'm so tired if you like this video please comment like and subscribe uh and if you what are your thoughts on stephen king i want to get a dialogue going do you like stephen king do you like his movies do you like his dramas or do you like his horror um i think there's a world where any kind of Stephen King is the right Stephen King for me. And I think everybody else too. I just want to thank you guys, as always, for being so kind and for the likes, the comments. But I think, uh, I think old Zelda's got something to say to her sister. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell to no. Oh, no. Never get out of bed again. Never get out of bed again. Oh, damn. No.